Look, I started my intervention in the Nigerian political space arguing for secession. That was during the Apache years. But as I have grown older, as I have come to know my country a little better, as I have come to study the history of Nigeria, both before the colonial and both during the colonial era, and even today, what I have come to realize is that a lot more binds us together than actually separates us. However, the loss of the right to self-determination has to a very large extent created reactions and these reactions are what you see manifesting as secessionist demands. If the Nigerian is allowed to compete or live together on even kills, where each constituent unit, because remember we did not start off as this unitary behemoth that has been excessively feudalized since 1966, we started off as federating units. Nigeria is no longer federal. If we went back to those federating regions, even if you are going to expand the numbers as recommended almost by every constitutional confab that we have had in Nigeria, if we went back to that, you might find that a lot of the pressure related to secession will be dialed down. Because how can somebody sit down in Abuja, take the wealth of the Niger Delta, and redistribute leaving the Niger Delta even more impoverished than almost anywhere else in the country? So I will say to you that if we ever had the opportunity to sit down and dialogue as to how we should be governed, I would always recommend a return to regional federalism. That is what I would recommend. And if you also look at both the Jonathan report, even the Abacha Constitutional Conference as well, what you will find in all of those is a yearning to go back to regional, uh, regional federalism with autonomy residing in the regions. That, is, that, has, that was the basis of the creation of Nigeria originally. Without the agreement for federalism, there will never have been in Nigeria. Amadou Bello will never have agreed to live in a unitary system such as the one in which we call it. In fact, it's even an insult to the unitary system to call what we have a unitary system. The British have a unitary system of government. They are the classic unitary state. And yet, you have devolution of power to the Welsh Parliament. You have devolution of power to the Scottish Parliament. You even have the Scots having referendum to determine whether they remain within the United Kingdom or not. And yet, that is a unitary system. We call ours a federal system and you can't even have state police. Is a struggle to have state police. I, I, I came across one of my posts that I think I made that post about six years ago related to beer. That you collect VAT on my beer, but you create his bar in Kano and you say that I can't drink or trade at all, even though it, this hypocrisy ignores the fact that people will buy their beer and pour it inside the kettle. And they carry it around. Kano State probably drinks more beer than Lagos State in reality. But the hypocrisy would have them deny this, and it is written into law in their own place, even though it even though it conflicts clearly with my right as a Nigerian as enshrined in the fraudulent constitution. So we have a mishmash of all kinds of lies that we have institutionalized and continue to tell ourselves as though they are sacred truths. How would you how would you evaluate or assess what happened in the Delta States between the Nigerian military and the local locals? Let's to be clear about this. It is almost impossible to say for fact exactly what happened in Okwama or Okwama. We don't know. All we have are the stories put out by the Nigerian army, whose credibility I do not accept. The same army was responsible for the massacre at Leki Gate, and it has continued to lie about it. So I don't know what happened in Okwama 
All I know is that the army came out and said, I believe 16 personnel were killed by members of the Okwama, Okwama community. After that, we've had several versions of this story coming out from the people themselves. We've been told that there was, and there was, there have been some unrest between the Jo community and the Urubu community. We've been told another version that said that the soldiers came in. This was on Delta State TV, Delta State Radio and Television Broadcasting Station. It was there. They said the soldiers came. They entertained them in the town hall. Soldiers then demanded to go away with some of the community's leader, and it was from there the refusal to hand the community leaders over. A massacre ensued in the town hall. Whether that is true or not, we don't know. The first casualty in Nigeria is the truth. We are left with conjectures. You never can tell what is true and what is false. The only thing that is clear is that soldiers were killed and scores of civilians have been subsequently murdered. Whether some were killed before the soldiers were killed, I have no way of knowing. But what has become clear is that soldiers have been engaged in reprisal attacks in that community. And there are videos showing men, women, and children murdered in that community, buildings burnt down in that community. So it is almost impossible to speak to what has happened in that community because we don't even know what is true and what is propaganda. I don't trust anything coming out of the Nigerian army. That's a fact. I really don't know who is telling the truth. Number one, I know that I can't take anything coming out of the Nigerian army. But I also don't know anyone speaking authoritatively on behalf of the community that has been affected. So it is next to impossible, and this tells you the kind of country in which we live. Life is short, nasty, and brutish, and it is superintended by the state itself. So it's difficult to comment on something where you don't have all of the facts.